Welcome to the Mobotics Cloud Demo. This cloud tutorial is intended to provide a small overview of what the user, and later in the video, what the installer can use in the cloud. For the user, the cloud appears primarily with the layouts where they can choose between different layouts. The use of the 6 megapixel resolution of the cameras can be adjusted by these post presets. The camera then performs a native zoom and correspondingly shows details in the picture. For this purpose, we have defined different presets. I think the usage here is very obvious. What I particularly like about the cloud is you can very easily open a comfortable playback window. In this playback window, the user has the possibility to use the mouse to choose a specific time and play the footage. Then the cloud switches from a preview stream to a high resolution stream, which can previously be set. You can now see here it is reproduced and the careful observer will notice there's been a jump. This area where these black lines are marked in this timeline. This is where virtual PTZ actions or pan tilt actions in the cloud are marked and you can select these in a targeted manner. An extraordinary functionality in the cloud is the possibility of the synchronous playback. To do this, open a second window, position these side by side, and now move in the right window of the time slider. You will notice also that the time slider on the left automatically moves because it's all in sync. As soon as the user plays the right video, the left side of the screen is also played in the same time range and you can view and rate both. When I turn this mode off, I just press this round symbol and therefore you realize that this time synchronous mode is deactivated. Playback functionalities now only take place in the right hand dialog box. I turned it back on that you can see how easily you can switch this on again which is also not only limited to two windows, but can be used with many playback windows. Now, if we take these plus and minus symbols, we can switch to the so-called gallery view. The user not only receives the current image displayed, but also the previous events as small preview windows are displayed, and can be, of course, according to the image selection, choose a corresponding event and reproduce it. It is another form of locating relevant events in the recording. Next, we're going to look at exporting a specific area. To do this, he must press the Save button. Then another dialog window opens. There, he can select the type of download, select a certain remark, and can then easily press Download and then the sequence is saved to the download area of your cloud. Let's take a look at this more closely. Here below to the right, two red icons were suddenly created. Let's watch the whole thing again on the other playback window. I press again on the Save button. Select again a type from what I would like to download make another remark for this export in this dialog box. Maybe I should make it a little bigger so that you can see the red icons in the timeline. These are time markers and these can be changed from the user with shift click. I'm going to move this to the end with shift click. As you can see a green area has been drawn and this selected area will now be downloaded. We'll watch this later in detail. Let's jump to the tags. Tags are a useful way to sort a large number of cameras according to your own criteria. Various tags are created here. For example, fisheye, IoT, street. You can use any name marker and can later select the corresponding markers in the tags group. Search for them and the cameras with these markers will be shown in the display accordingly. 
A special highlight of the cloud is the user administration. Creating a new user is no longer a problem in the cloud. You only need the email address of the new user. Enter it into the dialog and then determine which access rights the user should have. Access around the clock, to which cameras in detail, but only access on all, on few, none. That can be determined with drag and drop and the same with the layouts. You drag and drop the corresponding layout where access needs to be granted into the mask. With fine granular user rights, the administrator or the owner of the system can assign which rights the new user should have. This is easy to solve and well outlined and brings the classic user administration from the installer back to the management of the owner. This is a huge progress. Let's jump back to the download area of the camera. We see that one download is not quite finished. Let's see the finished download. You can quickly find a link to access it. You see, you open the same area where we had previously chosen the export. That means every user who has access to the cloud and has the appropriate authorization can look at the same area, and each can then, with the right authorization, choose, this is an important area. I would like to download it. I want this to be permanently on my backup hard disk. To do so, click on the cloud, download the zip file, open it, and various MP4 files are included. One MP4 file is a high-resolution recording. The actual event, and the other is the preview resolutions that the cloud permanently has depending on the settings. Both are now saved on my computer. That was the user settings, the user guidance for the normal users. Now let's get to the installer views. Here you can find a great overview that shows what is the status of my cameras. Is there a problem? Do I have to reduce the amount of resolution? Of course I can change the resolution, change the bitrate. The quality can be adjusted accordingly. Does my resolution fit the upload? I can also define various video motion windows. I can create polygons. I can define the area in the picture that is important and can determine the sensitivity. I can also make the rules. This window should trigger an explicit alarm, send an email, or send a push notification. And at what times? I can do that here exactly in this dialog. We will now jump again into the dashboard to the view of the administrator. This has all the cameras in it that can be added or have already been added. Let's jump on a fisheye camera on the settings. Here is a setting called Dewarping, which is especially interesting because here you can do a cloud based equalization. Let's do this by creating a new viewport. Call the viewport double panorama and set the type double panorama area. A fisheye camera will be changed to a virtual double panorama image. Various presets can be chosen here, but we will view that later in the live view in more detail because you can also do it here and also in the user view later. Now we have to find a new viewport and can save it. You can then of course use the garbage can symbol to delete this viewport again or change it. This can be done very easily. In analytics we have up to five analytics functions that can be booked individually with every camera. You can also select the location of the camera. An important point is the topic of uploads on cloud. How much bandwidth do I have? How much of the bandwidth has been used? How much bandwidth is used by my system? How is the memory storage? Does my buffer match to my corresponding upload? Bandwidth? Do I have to worry about this? This is very precisely detailed here and you can make an accurate analysis 
and optimize your system. Once more, let's jump to the dwarp layout. Because we have already created the viewpoint, I will now show the possibility of how to use the virtual zoom and pan tilt functionality of a fisheye camera. Of course, you can jump to any viewpoints into the corresponding quadrant and modify the orientation of the camera. The camera would be saved as fisheye. The same applies also in the playback, as you see in the live view. We jump from this installation to the parent view. Here we see different locations from different cameras with various bridges. There are other layouts of other cameras that I have access to, a large number of cameras, a large number of locations. This is no problem with the cloud. In the current settings, there are different things like privacy, which will be discussed again in a later tutorial. However, I would like to describe the responder functionality. This is where you can determine who should have access to the system before an emergency occurs. A so-called first responder mode. For this purpose, I'll just take a fictitious police address and just say the police should have access in a special emergency when I push the button and determine what they have access to to which cameras in detail, I can determine this here. When this is done, a red button appears called Activate First Responder Mode Active. I would like to thank you very much for your attention.